Hi everyone, I'm Broken Meeple, and today we're back to reviews. Yes, it's been a little while, but you know, hopefully you've enjoyed some of the content that's come out, and now with the UK Games Expo well and truly over, it's time to look forward and try out a few of the games and possibly review some titles that have either come out at the Expo or are starting to come out as like Origins has been finishing over in the States. Today it's time for Santa Maria! This is a medium complexity Euro game from a Porter Games. The idea being that it's using a combination of tile placement and dice drafting in order to perform actions and get victory points at the end of the day. Of course! Now in Santa Maria, you are a bunch of colonists from like kind of 16th century time, landing in a new world and setting up your new home. You're building buildings, you're collecting resources, you're doing little trading, you're shipping goods off. You know, it's basically like a little mini settlement style game. Now we'll get more onto that theme a bit later, but just understand that the main crux of this game revolves around tile placement, where you have a board in front of you and you can put tiles out, kind of a bit like a mixture of Carcassonne and Isle of Sky and these tiles will allow you to get various bonuses as you build up your little engine. You're also dice drafting in order to perform certain actions uh, on, on your board, which involve rows and columns. Basically the board is numbered one to six with blue dice and one to six with white dice. And as you draft a die, whether it's a blue one that you have personally or a white one from the random roll selection, it activates the row or column, and everything in that row or column gets you a good, gets you an action, you know, gets you various things. But then the dice get clogged off on your board, so certain actions can't be used more than once, and it's basically an efficiency engine builder. You've got to lay the tiles on your board in such a way that you can get some really powerful rows and columns going, providing you draft the dice. But on top of this, you've also got to level up on certain tracks on the board, like a praying religion track, a let's try and get the word right, Conquistador track, <laughs> I really hate that word. And also you're shipping goods off, which gets you income every round, and there's only three rounds in the game. You essentially draft as much dice as you can, you can only take so many in a round, but you just keep going round with each person doing an action until they pass, and then you rinse and repeat for two more rounds. There's only three rounds in this game. But once you've got to the end of that, you total up your victory points in various ways, whether it's from the tracks, from special tiles that you can get, from your shipping, from your board, the colonists, there's quite a few ways to score points here. And then of course, total them up and the most person, sorry, the person with the most wins the game. Now the first thing we've got to talk about is the theme. Uh, yeah, whatever there is of it. It could be, for, it could have been called Belgium for all it mattered, you know, the, the setting is there, okay, you, you know, you're trying to get colonists on your home board to score more points. You are flipping over ship tiles to get various incomes. The tracks are called Religion and Conquistador, so they fit the setting. But other than that, the theme is pretty pasted. This doesn't make you feel like you're settling in a new world, doesn't make you feel like a colonist, doesn't even make you feel like it's the 16th century. To be honest, if you asked me where Santa Maria was, I probably wouldn't even be able to point it to you on a map. You know, it's, the theme is pretty pasted. This is very much a sort of, not, not super dry, but dry-ish Euro style game. It's an engine builder for those who like those style of games. I compared it a minute ago to, I'll put that over there, to Isle of Sky, and that is, this is kind of what this gives me a semi feeling of. Not the dice aspect, the dice isn't involved in Isle of Sky at all, but Santa Maria's like tile placement board building takes a lot from this, because in Isle of Sky, you were building this personal map in front of you and you, had to, you wanted the roads to line up in order to get more income and you wanted the terrain types to match and stuff. This is similar. Except you're building your board, you know, you want roads to connect in certain ways for potential more points, but you're also trying to put the various action spaces in certain places to combo them off nicely. Like you could have a row that's filled up entirely of, say, 
Uh, let's see, uh, right, well, resources. So you activate the free row and suddenly you get a couple of wheat, you get a couple of uh, you know, crystals and you know some wood. You, know, you get a nice row of resources. But then you might have a column down the side that gets you a couple of gems, but then also activates an action where you can trade gems to get money or victory points. And so when you activate that column, you get the resources which you can then trade for the points. It's all about being efficient and clever with creating combos. And if you like combo building, this is definitely a game you want to look at. But like I say, the theme is pretty pasted because the tracks could be anything. I mean, the Conquistador track is literally just get ahead, get points at the end of the round. That's literally all it is. You get a gold bar for your troubles if you get certain high enough, but that's pretty much all the track is. It's end of round point scoring. The religion track gets you these monks, which you can place on certain spaces on the uh, like main board in order to get certain resources as a bonus, but you can also claim individual ability tiles, which give you a special ability and some points for the rest of the game, or you can put them on what they're called bishop tiles, which you have to sacrifice some points to get them, but they get you something like 10 to 12 points if you can muster a certain path to victory. The reason that it cuts points off your total is so that you can't just block people for no reason because the more monks that are on a space, the more you have to pay money to that player in order to put your monk on that space. So it stops people just randomly going, oh, you're aiming for that strategy, bro. Well, I'm gonna make it more expensive for you. Ha ha ha, no, because it's costing you two victory points and two victory points can be quite a lot sometimes we found out. So even then, the religion track is mainly putting, you know, claiming abilities and getting more blue dice. And if you don't get some of those blue dice, you're really gonna struggle. And that's kind of one criticism I do have, although we'll get onto that a little bit later. So, setting works. Theme could be anything. Who cares whether it's Santa Maria or anything? You know, it, it is a puzzle at the end of the day. Component quality, though, you're looking fairly solid. The artwork's pretty basic, I have to admit. There's nothing really stellar in here from an artwork perspective. It's not bland, it's colourful. It's striking when it looks on the... T uh, looks striking on the table, but... There's nothing to really sing home about. It's it's not quite cartoony, it's just bright and standard, really. <laughs> it's hard to describe. It's a quite forgettable artwork, I would put it. But components, you've got some nice quality tiles, you've got the you know, the various tokens for the board, you've got your own dice. The dice are very basic dice, but they're fairly big dice, you know, they it's satisfying to roll nine of them for the thing. And of course, they look good on your board. So, and the resources are colored wooden components. You know, I much prefer wooden components to plastic or tokens. So, component quality is decent in this. It's not stellar. The artwork is okay. Again, not stellar. It's very much adequate. You know, it could have been a lot worse, but it also could have been maybe a bit better. But when you consider that this game can be acquired for, well, what did I pay the expo? I paid a haggler price of £30 you can probably pick this up on an online store for probably around 35. I would say 40 is probably a bit much to ask, but 35 quid, 30 quid for a game like this, it's actually not bad value for what you get in the box. Though one major issue I have with components, and this is a huge annoyance, I mean, if I get a chance to pimp this game out with something different, I'm going to, the victory point tokens. It's so irritating to use these things. It's happiness tokens. And besides having a really creepy face on the front of it, it's these really tiny little tokens that go up in denominations of something like 1, 3, 10, 30, 100, you know, really weird denominations. But as you collect some of them during the game and when you're changing up at the end, you have to mess around constantly changing these tiny little tokens that are on your board, they're fiddly, it's a pain in the butt because you can't, it's meant to be hidden scoring. So you, you're flipping them over going, where's the free, where's the free, where's the, oh, for crying out loud. Would it have killed them to have just given us a score track? I mean, come on, you already got a Conquistador track and a Religion track on here. Could you have not just added a third score track? That would have been perfectly fine. Better still, why is there no score pad in this? You know, when you get to the end of the game, it's quite mathy to total up all the points you've got, all the happiness tokens, the stuff you get for shipping, the colonists, uh, you know, get you victory points, and there's no score pad. Why? That's unforgivable. Most Euro games these days that have got loads of different ways of scoring points should have a score pad. It should be almost mandatory. Now, whether somebody on Board Game Geek has designed a score pad that you can use for this game, I don't know. I haven't really looked. However, after this video is done, I'm certainly going to have a look. 
because if someone has done that, I recommend print one out, laminate it, and put it in the game. Because trying to do it in your head with these stupid little pink tokens is a big pain. So that is a major problem with the components. But if you're a diehard Euro engine builder sort of person, you're probably not too fussed about theme, nor are you kind of fussed about artwork and components at the end of the day, because you're more interested in what's it like building the engine anyway. And for that side, this is where the game now steps it up a notch. It is quite an entertaining little puzzle. I love the map building aspects you get in Carcassonne and Isle of Sky and similar other games. And here, it's not quite building a sprawling map of the countryside, but you are having to think about where you're going to place these tiles because it, it's not easy to build them. You know, you've got to invest in the resources to get the tiles, but then you've got to think, well, let's see, I could orientate it that way. That would give that really good column, but hang on, I need to put it that way. Ah, those roads aren't going to connect anymore. I need them with the colonists. Uh, ah, but if I get this tile straight after, I can put those two together, make a really cool combo there. And it really does force you to think about where you're going to do your tile placement. And you can't ignore it. I've played this game where I've done both sides of, you know, really focusing on those tiles and not focusing on them at all. And I didn't do particularly well in the one where I barely built anything. But in the game that I like built the entire map, I managed to fill every single space. I still only just won, but I won. You know, it certainly gave me what I needed. So it's not that you must fill up every space on your board in order to do well, it's the fact that you've got to create some powerful combos and rows and work off it. But of course, you're not just getting points by, you know, the engine building side. There's plenty of other paths to victory, whether it's based on the bishop tiles, you know, there's three of them every game, there's a variety of them. There could be a bit more in the box, but this is going to get an expansion at a later date, so I'm hoping they'll add more. And you, you can do like the shipping to get lots of income, focus on one particular type of income and really munchkin that. You know, you could get your points from upping your religion track to the max and just uh, populating yourself with more points there. Conquistador, if you're championing that every round, you can get a pile of points, almost a few too many, I think. And, you know, the tiles themselves, if you've got lots of colonists on the board, you'll score pretty good at the end as well. So there's a lot of nifty ways of getting points, and that's not even including certain other things you might do in the game, like trading resources for points if you get the action tile to go with it. So paths to victory are pretty varied, but it's not that you're going to munchkin one thing and do none of the others. I have had games where I've like, you know, I've gone full on religion. I am getting that to the top of the track. I'm going to get loads of points at the end for constantly getting more religion and more points, and I'll get my monks out and they'll give me bonuses, and that was great. But you still had to work on building your map. You still had to do some shipping. You still had to at least pay a little bit of attention to that Conquistador track, even though I think in that game I didn't. And so you can't ignore everything in, the, in like certain aspects of the game entirely. You really do end up doing a little balance of everything, possibly with a focus on one particular aspect. I mean, the religion track, for example, the, you get you the monk tiles, they're critical. You need those monk tiles. Not only do they get you good bonuses, but they also get you the special abilities, which can be quite handy, but also the bishop tiles, which allow you to actually have some end game scoring objective. On top of that, you need to get your religion track up to a certain point to get your blue dice unlocked, because in the pool, there's only white, but you have a personal blue one at the start, and then you can potentially unlock two more. Well, you need them. <laughs> I mean, you're you're, neg you're neglecting rows on your board if you don't use those blue dice. It's not that you have to get all three like, as soon as possible, but I would argue that if you're going to play the game and never get more than one of those blue dice, you're handicapping yourself quite a bit. So, yeah, you can focus on a particular path, but you have to accept that you are going to need to do a bit of everything, and that's in some ways a bad thing, but in some ways a good thing also. Because if you think about it, this is one of those experiences where you will be, want to do everything. You want to do everything, but you can't. So you've got to pick your battles. You've got to pick what it is you really need. But you really want to do everything. You really want that tile. You really want that track. You really want that ship. Is It gives you that feeling all the way through the game. And that's a pretty solid way to build a Euro game. Giving you a lot of moments where you're thinking, oh, so much to do, so little resources to do it with. The game handles one to four players and caters for it, sort of. The only way this game scales is basically the dice. You roll a certain amount of dice based on the number of players. 
one player is basically a solo mode where you play the normal game in a two player setup and you have some slight tweak to the scoring but apart from that it's basically get the most points. I would actually argue though the one player mode in this is in some ways better than playing it two, three and four because the problem as you go up in players is that it can add a considerable length of time to the game. And it's not so much that the game is normally long, it's only medium complexity. And the game, what does it say, uh, about 90 minutes? Yeah, 45 to 90 minutes. Who's playing this in 45 minutes? I want to know, but probably, you know, even two players are probably looking at least an hour. But you should be able to get a game of this done in 90 minutes. And I don't, I don't, I don't deny that you could do that. I think you could get a four player game of this done in 90 minutes, but this game gives you a lot of options, gives you a lot of different things to do. You know, do I want to take a dice? Do I want to, which dice do I use? Which column do I use? Should I do that column, that column, that column? Should I do the blue die, that row, that row, that row? Should I get the ship? Should I up that track? Should I pass? You know, there's a lot of options you've got. And as a result, woe betide anybody who plays this game with anybody who's got any mocker of analysis paralysis because this game lends itself to that in a big way. I have played some games where I am literally sitting at my table, bored out of my head, waiting for a player to hurry up and take his move because he's either trying to min-max his score or he's trying to contemplate every possible option rather than just doing the classic Euro teaching style that I tell people which is pick a route, don't deviate, don't strive off, focus, you know, and it, it really makes learning a Euro game so much easier if you do that, but some people just want to try everything out in their first game, and it just slows it down. So Santa Maria, a fairly solid engine building Euro game. I like the dice drafting, I like the tile placement, it can go on a bit long with four players, I don't like the fact that it's so prone to analysis paralysis that a lot of people are going to get like, you know, oh, not overwhelmed, but you're going to be thinking, oh, do I really want to play this game with that guy because I know they're going to be slow, it can be quite off-putting. It's best with two or three. I like the solo mode in it though. Components could use a bit of an upgrade. Certainly hate those victory point tokens. They do my head in. And it needs an expansion fairly soon. It's coming out later this year to really up the replay value because it's good, but could be better. You know, it, it just needs that little bit of a boost, which I know it's going to get. But in its current form, I've got to kind of rate it for myself based on that. I'm gonna hang on to this game though. I think it's a decent solid Euro game. If you like engine building and combo creating, this is definitely one you should look at. Personally for me, probably about a seven. Gonna hang on to it, still in my collection. And certainly one I would like to pull out, particularly if it's either solo or if I've just got maybe one or two mates who are good Euro fans who I know aren't gonna overthink everything. So Santa Maria from a Porter Games. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Check out the podcast. Check out all my other top 10 lists and top 100s and everything. Sooner or later though, I'm gonna have to get started on that real top 100. Yes, my top 100 of all time is coming. I'll be starting on the preparations for that very soon during July and probably pumping up those videos during August. So until then, see you on the next episode. And remember, it doesn't matter which track you're leveling up or which die you've nicked, still only a game. So calm down, all right? Take care. See you next time.